Next on the agenda is public comment. My name is Madeline Carl. I worked at CanTV for three months. I resigned yesterday. My main concern is the disproportionate allocation of resources to signature shows and the misalignment of the mission statement and the current operations. I think there's a big gamble taking place and what's being gambled is Chicagoans' access to a 40-year-old institution and the mission at its core. Uh, my name is Andrea Alberti and I was an employee at CanTV for over four years. I resigned from my position as Interim Community Partners Manager on March 6th because I found the current work environment had become untenable. I was hired as a Community Program Coordinator, uh, which means I'm supposed to go out into the community and shoot, and I barely got to do that because I'm crewing these shows. Me and my team were referred to as the production team. I think I feel invisible here for the most part, and I think a lot of us do. February 24th, I was suspended for one week without pay because I allegedly closed the door too loudly. During my 90-day review at Cannes, it was told that I needed to soften my dialogue, and I was told that I slammed my notebook on the desk when I walked in. This decision, from what I understand, was made from the executive director and him alone, which I interpreted as a clear act of intimidation meant to push me out of my position. I think that the management of, cable, of this cable access center, which is one of the premier access centers in the country, um, should take the, the, the original spirit of it seriously. I feel like with the community not being able to use the studio as much as they should be able to. Can TV is sort of being turned into a private production studio. And I think it's going to be hard to prove to Comcast that this is a community resource when the community can't use Can TV. I'm making these statements not out of spite or anger, but because I believe that Can TV is at risk. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on The Elders with Gino and the Doc. Doc, how you doing today? Fine to yourself, sir. Doc, 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 this is number three. We're mm -hmm. talking about Can TV, a place that we love, a right. place that we've been here a long time. Uh, we are trying to get to the bottom of why some of the employees here feel like things have changed a little bit, Doc. Mm -hmm. And when I say the employees here, I mean a lot of the employees that are no longer here, right, right. almost specifically, Doc. And one thing, how long you been here? Yeah, I, longer than I can recall. But it's back early 90s or late 80s. I am 1995. Mm -hmm. Very proud to be here, got here. And my children became mm -hmm. producers mm -hmm. when the time came for them to become producers. Um, there's a rule book. I think you can become a producer as young as 13 or 14, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to check the up-to-date rules. But as, as funny as that sounds, that question came up in the board meeting. Mm. They had a board meeting um, in March. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the next board, board meeting is in June. They had a board meeting in March, and that question came up. A nine-year-old young person wanted to become a producer or, you know, and obviously uh, the person that's the executive producer right now had no clue what the correct answer was. Mm. So he gave them some BS, wrong answer, mm. when the rules state you have to be a certain age. Mm -hmm. And that's because if you're eight, nine, ten years old, eh, you're still a child, eh, Coming on TV with people having the ability to mm. upset your equilibrium, you know, people say things about you. You got to be careful who mm. you put on TV. And putting your, your children on TV, you got to be real careful with that, Doc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the reason we're talking about the CAN TV uh, situation is CAN TV, and this is unit number three. This is our third time visiting CAN TV issues. And the reason, well, during that is because the employees here have been uh, coming here, staying a short period of time and quitting, or have, people have been here a long time doing a wonderful job with all kinds of accolades, 
and they get a new executive dele- uh, executive director, and all of a sudden they're bad employees, Doc. Yeah, it's, it's, it's painful because when you walk in here, you feel the tension. It's, you know, when you used to walk in here, you felt like you was at a college campus. Correct. We used to talk about that all the time. You came here, you, you, you learned, and you produced. It was a good feeling, family-type situation. Now it's toxic. You come in here now, it's, it's like a hostile environment. It appears for some of the staff, I don't know everybody, basically I don't know nobody that's left to that e- extent. Correct. And that's a sadness because the fact that this spot was not made for that. This spot was made for community environment. And what has happened, this individual has removed anything connected to before he was here. Like there was one person that was here, it was a management person, that had her own show. And she was part of his signatures. But now from what I understand, and you know more about it than me, that's been erased to that degree. And the thing is, now the only people that he seemed worthy are people that he has brought in with him as it relates to producers or whatnot. Now when you got rid of the last person that was part of that culture. If you wanted to have somebody up there, you should have had Washington on that board, Obama on that board, and Burke on that board, Burke Minotaurus on that board. But all we got is some people that don't nobody here know, and only you can recognize. And what we're talking about is when you come in Can TV, they have walls. They have right. walls. They have pictures on the walls. The pictures are, you know, on the wall, but currently, as of today, if you go on the wall, and this is certainly the last 30, 60 days, you only see a few po- photos, pictures, posters, we'll call them, of people who are just affiliated with Darius TV. In the last year or so. In the last year. It's like no one, it, it's almost like Can TV didn't exist right. until he got here. Right. Because Okay, you decide to put posters on the wall. There's nothing wrong with posters, Doc. Right. But why would you not have posters of the people that made this place great before you got here? Right. And if you walk in the hall, you don't have to take my word for it. Just walk in the hall and see for yourself. There's no pictures right. of nobody that he didn't put them on the throne is the best way to say it. He right. came up with these signature shows. And what you're talking about is at the board meeting, someone, a board member, had the intelligence audacity. <laughs> or the audacity to ask Darius, executive director, they asked this person, what happened to the show political forum? Hmm. Where's it at? What hmm. happened to it? And he had the audacity to respond, are you asking me this question as a board member? Or are you asking me this question as a community producer? I heard as far as uh, some different updates on some of the shows, I didn't hear any update as far as for political form. Uh, uh, is, is so uh, what is the status as far as for political form? Um, I'm gonna speak to you as a board member, not as a community partner. Which one are you speaking to me as? Which first of all is an insult. Yes. Because what's the difference? Right. Answer the question, bro. You know what I mean? I'm well. I heard you in regard. No, no. Which one are you speaking to me as? I'm speaking as a board member. And this executive director got so pissed from this question. What I'm saying, as far as with political form, uh, just I didn't hear any updated on that, so it will continue. You didn't hear any update on my show. What are you asking me, Rochester? He got so pissed. Why would you ask about that show specifically and not in the arena? That he turned off his video. Because, because I, I heard you mention in the arena, you're going to have a guest on there uh, come soon. We're coming off a great uh, hot, uh, as far as the political season, live show with the great work that Sylvia's done. Uh, just, I just didn't wanted to know was there any update on it. That was pretty- and he turned off his audio, Doc. Mm. I have no updates for Brian. He like, oh, what did that? It's like for the people that saw it, Mm -hmm. it was like he turned off his stuff so he could have a fit in the background. He wanted to cancel them. 
He wanted to delete those, that individual as a human being because he didn't have the status recognizable by this new mentality that he brings in. And can you imagine if you're a board member and this person go at you like that? <laughs> yeah, you used to get suspended or fired. I mean, oh, oh, you the executive director, one of the board members asked you a simple question. Right. And your response is to get upset, get nasty, and then turn off your video right. immediately, Doc. Mm-hmm. They say it was a very uncomfortable exchange. Yeah. And the board members actually saw it. So they can't even say they were in the dock. They were in the dark, Doc. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine this guy doing that? Well, I can imagine him doing it, but I think what bothers me is how did we, the elders, who are advocates, not only for our shows, but for those that come after us, since us, how did we allow that board to just change from the time when Bert Nutteris was there, the Alderman, and all those other people that we knew? Now when you look at them and see them, where did they come from? Now they're here. And now you're talking about a board member when you was on the board. It was a consensus among us that you would be on the board. When we brought it to you to be on the board, you represented boys and me and everybody else, Jose. But now, who do they represent? And the question is, right longer now, it don't sound like they represent who the program, this place was established for, which is the common person in the community, and his statement is clear to that. If you're just being a producer, you are deleted. You are canceled. You are dismissed. You are nobody Correct. unless you are a board member. What difference do it make? I'm a citizen, I'm a resident, and I'm here. That's For right. a person like that to be in power, it's dangerous. somebody need to investigate that. It's dangerous. And one thing, the only thing that matters to this executive director mm-hmm. is the, his shows. And no other work is substantially being done except on his shows. Mm. The number one, one of the number one complaints of the employees is that they spend a lot more time doing his shows Mm. than the community shows. Mm. He has taken community partners, employees who normally work on community shows. I don't worry about that. No, no, no. Get to my show. Mm. When this person has outside people producing the show and when they turn it to him and he's not satisfied he give it to the can tv employees to say hey fix this fix this fix yeah. this so they are fixing work that he already paid somebody else to do mm-hmm. but because the financials which follow the money is always the number one rule of investigating somebody Follow the money. Mm-hmm. He's paying them. So why are the Can TV employees fixing it? Mm. Ho, ho, ho. So the Can TV employees have to take all day to do his signature show, Crap Ola, I'm going to call it. And in some cases, they take the work home mm. or they stay late without getting paid for it, Doc. Mm-hmm. Mm. So if you don't work like a slave on his shows, you're automatically on the list. If you complain about it, you're automatically on the list. And that's why they have so many openings. You go to the website. I went to the website today. Today is the 29th. What's the Uh date? 29th. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know the date. 429. You go to the website. And you say, okay, I saw Gene Matthews on TV. Mm -hmm. I want to be on TV like Gene Matthews. The shows that come on the 7 and the 8, they'll uh, inter-promoting each other. Mm -hmm. In in those shows, will you also be promoting um, the services that CAN Television provides and something that basically lets uh, let people know that about CAN Television's mission and who we are. So are, are you advertising anything? Hey, just like you see the shows that you're watching now, that you'll be able to produce shows just like this. Would that be featured in the uh, programs that come on between uh, 7 and 8 o'clock? Um, to be honest, probably not right now. It's more important to promote the other shows. 
So you click on Can TV. They say, oh, we give classes, blah, blah, blah. The better place to sell what we can do in training is social media. We then you click, okay, I want to take the class. It's on social media, you can tell them click here. And, and you know what the Can TV website tells you? Hmm. There are no training sessions scheduled. Okay, I'd like to add that I think that you're missing a key opportunity to promote the other services that we're pro uh, providing um, because you put in a lot of resources and promotion into those shows uh, as far as the schedule programming. So I definitely think we're missing a key opportunity. That's what it mm -hmm. says, Doc. So he is so busy doing his signature shows, forget City of Chicago, forget the residents of Chicago who want to learn how to get down here, who want to replace you, want to replace me. Because, hey, at some point in time, <laughs> we all got to go. <laughs> well, hell, you keep this up. And we might, you go might not have to worry about that. He might get around to that. No. We'll so see. they can't even ever replace us, Doc, right. because there are no training classes. And do you know why there are no training classes, Doc? Because he fired everybody, Doc. Mm. He fired everybody. And show how incompetent he is. I said incompetent. He hired one of his buddies, his first hire, not his second hire, a gentleman. He fired, he, he hired one guy, the first guy he hired, brought him in, gonna be his man. He gonna, he gonna, boy, he gonna, you know, fix this place. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The guy resigned within two months, Doc. Mm. His hand picked, and I'm not gonna call the guy flunky, even though some people would call him a hand-picked flunky. But he resigned within two months, Doc. Mm. And he said the reason he was resigning, because working at Can TV was not a good fit. Mm. Hold it, Doc. If I ask you to come and work at a company that I'm in charge of, and after two months you say it's not a good fit, Doc, what's, 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 what's going on? Because... People in the know say that Darius, Mr. Executive Director, wanted this guy to be a hatchet man. Mm -hmm. And the guy had a personality where he said, oh, whoa, 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 I'm not nobody's hatchet man. Mm -hmm. I'm nobody's hatchet man. Mm -hmm. Not yours, not anybody else's. So he resigned within two months. Mm -hmm. And the board of directors, how in the world are you letting these people hire and fire people when he, he brings somebody and hire them first person? Out the gate, and he ain't here now. Mm -hmm. He's not somebody we could talk to. We can't interview him. He's gone. Mm -hmm. He got nothing to say, and I don't blame him. Mm -hmm. You you worked. You got paid. You resigned. I don't expect him to give us a long mm -hmm. interview. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it wasn't a good fit, Doc. Why is it not a good fit when you're working for your boy? Your boy recruited you. All right? So it just goes to show how power hungry he is. And some people, even people that think, oh, it'd be a great thing to work with a guy that I know and, you know, reform the place. Mm -hmm. He won't even tolerate it, Doc. Well, I think one of the things, and so the public will understand, this is not a sour, great, stomping type process because we want some wine. This is a process of advocating for which this place was established. And that is community residents have an opportunity to come here and become producers. But what goes along with that is for staff people to be treated with respect and honor. Correct. For a person to come in with some type of egotistical I'm God complex. Correct. That, that we definitely will use this opportunity as elders Correct. and as producers. Correct. Not to try to berate the man but to bring to the attention of others what is happening here and hope that the staff that is working, that, that has worked, don't have to live in fear. It's unfair for a person to come to work because some person you just brought in and whoever brought him in think he or she is God and a dictator. And unfortunately... He has treated the employees so bad that some employees have serious personal reservations about his ability to do this job. Mm. And they have put their concerns in writing, Doc. Mm. They have put their concerns in writing, and they have submitted them to the proper authorities. Mm. Now, reportedly, 
these concerns are being looked into. Mm. You and I today are not going to get into people's private issues at this point. But, Doc, those concerns are in writing, and they're so serious that I think we should get into them. Mm. I don't think today's that day Mm -hmm. because reportedly these things are being looked into. But when you have employees who leave here emotionally distraught Mm. because of what you did to them, that is not something we can tolerate. Mm. You know what I mean? Because Mm. you are making this place a hostile place to work, Doc. Mm -hmm. It's a hostile work environment when you have to leave this place emotionally upset at the end of the day, Doc. Yeah, and one of the things that I find very interesting is now they got high security at the front door. Now... Yeah, I understand some people cars have had some tampering. But it's interesting that not only are employees and producers feeling pressure, something else is in the air that make you bring in high security. What's up with this? And it it seems like the executive director of personally feels like he is creating a kind of atmosphere where he might need to worry about himself. You know what I mean, Doc? Mm. That's what it feels like to me. You know what I mean? And if he is creating a hostile work environment, Doc, that is a bad thing. Yeah, well, what it makes me feel like is that a place that is supposed to be community friendly, now you come in and in a minute you're going to have damn metal detector machine. You're going to have situations as if you're going into the prison system because you are not trusted to come here to take care of your business because somebody might be engaged in a mindset or a management style that not because we are creating the threat, but because his or her action is bringing that type of environment into what we thought was a learning environment. Like I said earlier, similar to a campus of a university or college. Exactly. And one thing, here it is, the political season, the mayoral thing, and we got they got a show, political forum, Doc. They very proud of that show. He's got the show on hiatus, Doc. Why would he have a political show on hiatus, Doc? What is the explanation? I mean the full not the not the he gives you a BS answer explanation. The question is why does this executive director in the heat of a mayoral race, which let's be honest, politics in Chicago don't get no better right. than a mayoral race. Right. You got lots of candidates, a lot of people you can interview. They all want to be on radio. They all want to be on TV. You just tell them, I got a mic. We will record. This is what time to be there. And they will come. Right. You and I both know, Doc. Yeah, and one of the things that's tragic about that is that the person that was hosting that show she used to be such a spirited, friendly, relaxed person. Mm-hmm. Kim Fox, all of the politicians would be on her show. Now, from what I hear and what I saw, the show I saw with her and this dude, the director, it, it, she seemed like she was so uncomfortable. It was like he had on a cue card. She was looking at him like she was nervous on what to say. I mean, I've never seen nothing so so insulting because she had been doing it as a professional for all these years and now you got somebody sitting at the table treating you like you're yo-yo now i don't know dude and this ain't personal but i'm saying we are looking we are watching and that's what we are here for retro current part of what we do teach empower and advocate and what we're saying is right now as elders we must advocate even if dude want to get into that position of challenge, we don't want challenge. We ain't trying to have, we ain't trying to tell you how to run the spot. But come on, board. And I see them, they're they a new generation. I don't know where y'all come from or who you represent or who brought you here. But come on. This is not what this place was created to do. Not have this type of toxic, hostile environment. Well, Doc, we, as I said, 
working with people that have been wronged in some way. And they keep calling you. And they have put down their thoughts, feelings. Right. And what happened to them in writing. Right. And luckily, in some cases, we actually have what they put on a piece of paper, Mm -hmm. which we want to say thank you to them and their bravery. Today, we're not going to bump it out. Not today, Doc. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this. We're going to give the board of directors an appropriate amount of time, not forever, but we're going to give them, we're going to give them some days Mm -hmm. to sit on this. Mm -hmm. And that board meeting is in June. And if something isn't wrapped up favorably around or before that, we are going to actually start reading some of the pages, Doc. And we don't want to do that because I don't think they want us to read from the pages, Doc, because the pages are very emotional, very emotional, Doc. Well, let me just say this. I know some of the producers have are working with lawyers in the community, and I know that one of the producers uh, just finished the show with one of the attorneys who is a judge uh, as it relates to the administrative courts. And I was talking to her the other day because she was on the radio show. And one of the things that she stated, and one of the things that I'm going to suggest, because if she was working on a case, that's why she was doing the can TV and the radio. And she has been able to get that national outfit to reverse that decision that they committed against black women. Now, when I discussed that with this situation with her, she is willing, and she's a regular. Been doing shows here for years. But my thing to her and to you, Mr. Matthews, and the board, it's a simple matter. This joint was created by the government. My position is, where is the appropriate inspector general to come investigate this government body, institution, that's treating people what I would call in an unprofessional Hostile manner. That's the key. That's the key, Doc. Treating people in an unprofessional manner. He he should be looked at, and the board of directors should have done something already. And, you know, the board of directors, oh, we're working on it, we're looking at it, we're working on it, we're looking at it. Hey, 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 this ain't hard. You know what I mean, Doc? Right. It ain't hard to make the right decision. You know what I mean? And that the employees here... You don't have training classes. This is supposed to be for the Chicago residents. We don't have training classes. We don't have trainers. And we didn't have time to do shows. And we don't have time to do shows. The way it works in Can TV, you are a producer. You call. They look at the calendar to say, when would you like to come down here? Mm-hmm. And they say, well, look at the calendar and pick a date. Well, it's very hard to pick a date because because of these signature shows instituted by Darius TV, the executive director, he has blocked off a lot of the shows, a lot of the shows. And what is being told to people in the know is he'll block off the showtime, which is three hours. Here, you get three hours to make your show, to set up, to break it down, and to have the show, three hours. He will reserve the time for his show, but he'll also reserve the three hours before his show to set it up, Doc. Mm. Six hours for one show? Mm. That's what he does. So when you or me want to do a show, which I found it difficult late last year to do a show, Mm -hmm. he got it all blocked off for these signature shows. And I'm like, why is there, this is the first day of the month, and I called to get a show, And you tell me it's only maybe three spots left the whole rest of the month. Hold it. This is the first of the month. What do you mean? Right. It's only two or three slots. Right. And I guess he met with some of the producers and decided, oh, well, we're only going to do the signature shows on this day, this day, this day, so you producers can have this day. This day. Whoa, 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 man. No, no, no. No, 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 no. The producers got every day, man. Mm. And I'm being nice to saying man, because I really feel like saying what I would normally say. The producers should have every day. You and your 
shows should be on Sunday or when this place is closed. Mm. Because this place exists for the producers. It don't exist for Darius TV. Mm. And the board of directors in, is endorsing Darius TV by letting Darius TV have studio time. Mm. Why would they have studio time, Doc? Mm. This He didn't build this place. Right. This place wasn't built for him. It was built for you and for me. I've been here since 1995 doing shows. Mm -hmm. You've been here since 1980-something doing shows. Mm -hmm. We were here long before he got here, and we'll be here long after he's gone. Mm -hmm. And there will be other great producers that are coming up. There's kids watching that will be producers mm -hmm. and will have great shows. Mm -hmm. We scratching the surface of what the kids out there watching today are going to do in the future with the help of the employees here at Can TV. But if we let this executive director run this place, the kids of today can only watch this and say, oh, man, I wish I could do that one day. When they don't realize you can do this if they have an executive director that empowers Can TV to be what it's here for. Yes. Not this crapola where he does a show and he does five shows and he takes all the time. So even in a month, I can't make a show because there's no time available. Mm -hmm. This place wasn't built for him, Doc. It was built for the community to come down here and make shows. And he should not be doing nothing here during when he's being paid to be the executive director, Doc. Mm. Unless his job description said executive director slash TV station manager, Doc. Well, that's why my thing is get, get, get the aldermen, get the politicians and the inspector general to come in and figure out how far off are they from the original mandate of this concept and this operation. Well, Doc, I can tell you, we are way far off. And if things are not straightened out within, we're going to give it, I don't want to say a number of days, but Doc, we got to give it a little bit of time. And I say a little bit of time, but if the board of directors does not see the error of their ways, we're going to have to be a little bit more vocal about the fact of what they're allowing to happen. Right. Because obviously they letting this guy run amok. And if we have a board that's letting this guy run amok, then we need to find out what it will take to replace them, Doc. Well, we hope for the best. We hope for the best and we hope for consensus and we work it out. Yes. But they let this guy terrorize employees, Doc. Terrorize them, Doc. Well, we got the letter that says he terrorizing the employees. Well, and they lucky we're not reading it today. We only have five minutes left in the show, so it's too long to, for mm -hmm. five minutes. But he better watch it. That's all I'm going to say because it's time for it to get out. Well, I would hope that he and the board, if it comes to that, are willing to reconsider some of the people that have been victimized Correct. by, by this, this management style. Correct. And, and those people will have opportunity to come back to jobs that they have been involved in for 20 and other years. A lot of those people that's gone, they love what they was doing. They didn't want to go. We're running out of time. All right, I'm through with it. We're running out of time. We could talk, but we, we're running out of time. We got a lot of more good stuff. Some of the stuff we have is emotional. The next show will probably be very emotional because we're going to have to go there with some of the actual people. The actual people, the actual allegations. Right. Tune in. We're going to be back. We're going to give the Board of Directors a little bit of time, but we will be back. Thank you, and tune in for the next time on The Elders with the Doc and myself. See you soon. Take care. I want to be, one, I want to be very clear about word usage. Um, it won't be catastrophic. We will survive it because we're can TV and because I'm a good leader.